What sort of games would developers create in 48 hours if they had to combine different game genres? The answer is in the 2020 edition of the Mix and Game Jam, in which the theme was mixing genres. This year, the Mix and Game Jam had over 3,000 people sign up and a total of 673 games, making it triple the size of last year's edition. The Jam has generated some pretty amazing games, and in this video, I want to highlight some of the most creative and fun submissions in no particular order. Let's take a look. Trial of the Tennis Lord by Quail Watcher is a simple but also very clever game that mixes the sport genre with some platformer action. You move your character around trying to approach the tennis ball to then hit it towards the enemy. The small scope of the project allowed the developer to focus on enhancing the main game action which made it very polished and fun to play. And there's definitely room for improvement here in the future, like creating a reward system that detects how fast you're eliminating the enemies in order to give you some sort of special ability. Other than that, this is a very enjoyable experience. Spinball by Logan and Team is a great combination of a pinball game with some adventure elements. In this game, the hero is constantly spinning their sword while you have to try to hit them with the flippers on the bottom of the screen. Along the way, you find modifiers and power-ups that help you beat the enemies. The concept of the game is familiar and easy to understand, making it very accessible. If the developers decide to continue with this game, Spinball has the potential to be a really good mobile game. Armed Frog by Oscar Dev has a very simple mix of platformer and shooter, yet it shines on its gameplay and level design. In this game, you control a frog that uses a limited amount of bullets to throw your player around and also clear the path in your way to reach out the coin at the end of each stage. This means that levels can be solved in many different ways and you have to be smart about how and when you're using your bullets. Having this very solid core mechanic allowed the developer to build and balance levels that slowly introduced new challenges and concepts. With a bunch of new levels, this could easily be published as a full game. Drifting Hearts by Janik and Team was a totally unexpected entry. This is a racing game where instead of finishing in first place, your goal is to flirt with as many drivers as you can during the actual race. I was very impressed to see that the developers managed to turn this into a very fun and good looking game. The personalities of the drivers are super well crafted and there are some really funny puns in the dialogue. I simply love it. Tetromino's by Andrew Box feels like the perfect balance between the classic Tetris style with platformer gameplay. In this game, you are controlling both the character and the falling blocks at the same time in order to get a high score. What is brilliant about this entry is that since you are moving two things at the same time, the inputs are simplified by making most of the actions happen only using the directional keys, like moving the character with the left and right keys, jumping with the up key, and using items like the drill or the bomb with the down key. Not only that, but this game is extremely polished, making it an overall amazing experience. The game Ordinary Pong by Daniel chose to mix many genres. You start off by playing some good old Pong when suddenly you're now playing Pong with a DDR-like rhythm game. And then you're avoiding asteroids. And then it's suddenly Space Invaders. The developer here definitely took the theme to the maximum level and did a great job with it. This is another entry with very familiar mechanics and a great tutorial, so it's very easy to start playing it immediately. I also think the presentation here was very well executed given the time limit, so nice job on that. Bomber Box by Mario8664 is a little puzzle game mixed with the bomb explosion mechanic from Bomberman. This entry is a very clever puzzle game where you play as a bomb that can push some rocks to activate triggers, but can also destroy weaker ones. This concept makes it so that the player needs to think of what they will destroy while also keeping in mind the necessary obstacles that need to remain to properly activate the triggers. The art and presentation of this game are very well made and the simplicity of the mechanic allow the developer to generate many levels exploring the idea. It would be nice to see the game expand and add more action elements such as the ones present in Bomberman. 
Rusty Wind Blows by Coltisti combines a clicker game with a shooter. In this game, you repeatedly click the center button to gain power, which you have to use in order to keep your engine running and to reload your weapon. Your goal is to reach the end of the level by destroying the enemies along the way and making sure that your boat is running. This entry is simply stunning. There are a lot of great elements here that make this an absolutely incredible experience. The shooting mechanic, for example, feels extremely powerful, not only because of the visuals, but also because it makes your boat move from its impact, which also makes the player use his action in strategic ways to make sure the boat is placed in a good spot. In 48 hours, the developer was able to pack a deep narrative with a stunning atmosphere while making the gameplay simple enough to understand and enjoyable to play. Amazing stuff. This Will Be Sports in 1985 by Crystal Claude and Team is a very colorful combination of sports games and arcade shoot 'em ups. The goal here is to kick the ball to hit the targets on your way, collect the golden eggs to increase your score, and defeat the final boss. This game has an amazing nostalgic quality to it, and you can definitely feel it through the gameplay and visuals. It is super impressive that the team was able to pack so much art and effects into a jam game. Awesome animations, particle effects, fade out screens, and so on. I would actually love to see the team build an arcade machine with an enhanced version of this game. Jump Shmup by Vimlark combines a platformer with a wave based shoot 'em up. In this game, you play as a tank that needs to jump from one platform to another in order to line up with the enemy position and shoot. This is a great example of how simple ideas allow developers to refine the gameplay and add visual elements that will enhance the game feel. At first it seems like the game is too easy but after a while the difficulty ramps up and the challenge becomes very fun. These were some of the games I wanted to highlight, but there is so much more to enjoy from the jam. Making a game in 48 hours is not an easy task, so just the fact that people were able to build something out of it is impressive. So for everyone who joined, learned something, or met new people, congratulations. I would like to invite everyone to check the submissions page from the Jam to see all the great games from the community. Just follow the link in the description to play some of these Jams. It makes me really happy to host this and see people having fun. This is what Game Jams are really for. I hope you are looking forward to the next Mix and Game Jam. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.